Welcome to this tutorial for using mtxpk.org. I'm Laura Ramsey and I'm an assistant professor in the divisions of clinical pharmacology and research in patient services at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. Today I'm going to tell you about a tool that my colleagues and I developed to monitor and predict methotrexate elimination in both adult and pediatric patients. This work was supported by an unrestricted grant from BTG Specialty Pharmaceuticals. Methotrexate-induced acute kidney injury occurs in about 1% of pediatric ALL patients, approximately 2% of those with osteosarcoma, and between 2 to 12% of adult patients treated with high-dose methotrexate. Age, concomitant medications, and inadequate supportive care can all increase the risk for methotrexate-induced nephrotoxicity. Serum creatinine elevations can lag behind acute kidney injury, so monitoring both methotrexate concentrations and serum creatinine is necessary to detect delayed clearance. Leucovorin is used to restart the folic acid cycle in all patients receiving high-dose methotrexate. It acts intracellularly and does not affect the plasma concentration of methotrexate. Glucarpidase reduces the methotrexate concentration in the blood by hydrolyzing extracellular methotrexate, but does not get inside the cell. This allows for a non-renal method of elimination when a patient develops acute kidney injury during treatment. The indication for glucarpidase states that it should be used in patients with plasma methotrexate concentration greater than two standard deviations above the mean methotrexate excretion curve specific for the dose administered. This can be confusing for clinicians and can cause uncertainty about when to use this medication. A consensus guideline was published to help clinicians understand when glucarpidase should be administered. In the published treatment guideline, the most common doses of methotrexate are shown along with the most common time points for monitoring methotrexate concentrations. The critical threshold methotrexate concentration is provided for each fixed time point where, in the context of rising serum creatinine and adequate supportive care, glucarpidase is strongly recommended. For example, glucarpidase is recommended if the concentration is above 30 micromolar at 36 hours, above 10 micromolar at 42 hours, or above 5 micromolar at 48 hours for all infusions. Having the published guidelines is helpful, but there are still some limitations to it. After the guideline was published, I received a question from a pharmacist at another hospital about obtaining methotrexate concentration at an unusual time point, which was 32 hours. She wanted to know if the plasma methotrexate concentration at 32 hours was two standard deviations above the mean for the dose that her patient received. At the time, the only publicly available reference was on St. Jude's website where she could draw a vertical line at 32 hours to see what the concentration was at the edge of this gray area on this graph. This prompted me to gather a team to make an interactive tool that would allow questions like hers to be answered more specifically. First, we needed a good pharmacokinetic model based on a lot of data. Through collaborations with the Nordic Society of Pediatric Hematology and Oncology, we obtained access to more than 31,000 methotrexate concentrations in 772 patients. We fit a pharmacokinetic or PK model to the data and found that a model with three slopes or compartments fit the data better than previously published two compartment models. Although the data we used comes from pediatric patients, this model includes serum creatinine as well as the patient's age, weight, and actual methotrexate dose and infusion duration, so it takes into account renal function and how that changes with age. It can be used for multiple patient types, including adult and pediatric patients with leukemia, lymphoma, and osteosarcoma, the common cancer types in which high-dose methotrexate is used. In order to further validate the model, we tested it using additional patient data from our own institution and also obtained data from the University of California San Diego Medical Center. The model was tested with nine patient cohorts with different indications for methotrexate, including almost 2,000 methotrexate plasma concentrations from 154 adult patients with lymphoma, leukemia, and osteosarcoma. As you can see in this table, the prediction of individual values is very accurate. The R-squared for the adult data is 0.96, compared to 0.99 for the pediatric leukemia data that was used to develop the model. R-squared is a measure of how well the model predicts the actual values and ranges from 0 to 1, with 1 being perfect prediction, 
so 0.96 is pretty darn good. Some advantages of mtxpk.org are that it is a free and open access website and you do not need to log in to use it. Also, patient data is not stored on the website, but you can save it to your local computer. You'll need to use the same computer and browser to access it again. This tool takes your patient's methotrexate dose, infusion, duration, age, body size, and plasma methotrexate concentrations and fits it to a curve. It plots your patient's data on top of the expected mean and two standard deviations for that dose. The patient's serum creatinine levels corresponding to the same time points also get plotted on the graph. Another useful feature of the tool is that it predicts the time to 0.1 and 0.2 micromolar to help the clinician understand how long it will take the patient to clear methotrexate. These are the levels used at some institutions to determine when the patient can be discharged from the hospital, so it may also help to predict how long the patient will be hospitalized. A report showing the data entered, as well as the graphs and the time to elimination, can be exported as a PDF, which can then be printed or saved. So now I'll go to the website and show you how to use it. I'm clicking on this link here, which will take me right to the website. But when you open a browser, you'll type in mtxpk.org into your browser, no www. On the website, you click the Get Started button here, or the Simulation Tool button up at the top. These are instructions that will walk you through how to use the tool, in case you forget what I'm about to show you. To scroll through all the instructions, you just hit Next, and it goes through all the instructions. To begin entering patient data and create plots, the first step is to hit the Start button to the left. You're going to enter your patient's data here in this first window. Choose a unique identifier for your patient and enter it here. This identifier is required, but it does not get saved by the website. If you choose to save the data, it is saved on the device so that you can load it again later if you would like to enter more data. Remember, you will need to use the same computer and the same browser to access saved data. Now I'll put in some data from a 15-year-old boy with ALL to demonstrate using the tool. First, we enter the age and gender here. Here we enter the patient weight. He has 57.3 kilograms and 168.9 centimeters tall. If you prefer, you can use this toggle to switch from the metric kilograms and centimeters to the imperial units of pounds and inches. This particular patient has ALL, so I'll select the indication of leukemia, where it auto-populates five grams per meter squared, but you can change the dose to whatever it is that your patient actually got. And since this is a leukemia patient, they get 10% in the first half an hour, and then 90% for the remaining time. For the lymphoma and osteosarcoma, this would not apply, and the patient would get 100% of the dose over the designated time the infusion took place. You can enter the actual infusion duration here. The simulation box asks how long you want to simulate on the graph. I'm going to put in 96 hours, but you can enter any time frame you would like to see plotted. If you save the data, you can always change this duration later. Then you hit next. Here's where you will enter the patient's plasma methotrexate and serum creatinine data. To enter baseline data, you would enter zero for the time, zero for the plasma methotrexate, and enter the baseline creatinine, which for this patient was 0.59. We will then enter the remaining data. Be sure to enter the time from the start of the methotrexate infusion. For this patient, the 24-hour methotrexate level was 137.5 micromolar, and the serum creatinine at the same time point was 0.7 milligrams per deciliter. Notice that you can also toggle the units for serum creatinine if you want to use micromole per liter instead. For 36 hours after the start of infusion, this patient had a methotrexate level of 14.17 and a creatinine of 0.94, and at 42 hours, a methotrexate level of 8.25 and serum creatinine of 0.97. And lastly, a 48-hour methotrexate level of 5.21 and serum creatinine of 0.94. If I wanted to add more rows for later times, I could do that by clicking this button and scrolling down. Now I'll click the Save button to keep the data in this browser so I can load it again later. Doing this saves both the patient data I entered on the previous screen and the methotrexate and creatinine levels I just entered on this screen. 
Next, to create the graph, I will hit Calculate. Here you can now see the expected mean elimination curve for this patient's methotrexate infusion, which is the green line. The green shaded area represents the 95th percentile or two standard deviations above and below the mean curve, and the upper red line is the two standard deviations above the mean curve. The patient's methotrexate concentrations and expected elimination for this individual patient's data is plotted with the black dotted line. Because I told it to plot out to 96 hours, this is what we are seeing here. For this patient, you can see that their elimination curve is above two standard deviations and is expected to remain so for the entire 96-hour time frame. The purple curve is the patient's serum creatinine. You can turn off any part of the plot that you don't want to see by toggling things in this legend up here at the top. To turn off the creatinine, just click on it in the legend like this and you can see that the purple line goes away. The blue diamonds show the published consensus guideline thresholds at 24, 36, 42, and 48 hours. As you can see, for this patient, his plasma level was above the guideline cutoff at 24 hours, below it at 36 and 42 hours, and above it again at 48 hours. Regardless, the patient's plasma methotrexate levels were well above the two standard deviation of the mean expected curve the entire time, which is the indication for use of glucarpidase. In this case, the tool provides better information for decision making than the guidelines because it uses the patient's own data. If we hover over any part of the plot, we can see that the box pops up that shows the patient's predicted level, the upper limit, the 95% probability, and the population mean. We can use this to answer that pharmacist's question of what is the expected level at 32 hours? For this patient, it's about 18 micromolar at 32 hours after a 5 gram per meter squared infusion. Another useful feature of this tool is the ability to predict when the patient will reach either a 0.2 or 0.1 elimination threshold. This is shown in the top right corner here. This patient is predicted to reach 0.2 micromolar at about 200 hours and 0.1 at 267 hours. To save or print, your patient's graphs and data, you can click on this button and it downloads a report to your computer. This is what the report looks like and I can save it to my computer or I can print it out. Now if you saved your data and we go back to the start button here and click on it, you can see all the values that we've entered for this patient and we can add more data if we want to. Now I'm going to show you how to go back and load a patient you saved. You click on this icon here and select the patient you want to pull up, and then click Load. For this example, I saved the same patient, but with more data. I'm going to show you the rest of the data for this patient we just saw. You'll be able to see how well it predicted the patient's elimination after I added more data to it. In this case, the simulation is going to go out to 276 hours, since that is after the previously predicted elimination threshold of 267 hours. As you can see, the previous prediction was pretty close. The patient actually eliminated to below the 0.1 micromolar level at 266 hours, and the curve fits the line pretty well. Now let me show you the data from a 72-year-old CNS lymphoma patient. I'm going to find this patient in the list of patients saved to my computer and click Load. This is a patient that received 3.5 grams per meter squared of methotrexate over four hours. This patient had a methotrexate level of 23 micromolar at 23 hours, and a level of 3.8 at 47 hours. You can see his creatinine was not great and was rising. The model predicts his methotrexate level will remain above two standard deviations for the entirety of the course, and it predicts he will take about 300 hours to clear methotrexate. If we go back and load the rest of this patient's measurements, you can see that the model predicts the additional data well and it did take him about 300 hours to clear the methotrexate. In summary, this tool was developed to help you monitor your patient's methotrexate levels and quickly and easily determine if your patient needs glucarpidase. Prolonged exposure to toxic levels of methotrexate in the face of acute kidney injury can be life-threatening. Visit mtxpk.org to see if your patient is clearing methotrexate as expected. I would like to acknowledge all of my colleagues listed here who contributed to the published guidelines, the PK modeling, and the mtxpk.org website development. 
If you'd like to send me feedback or ask questions, please contact me at mtxpk at cchmc.org or by using the Contact Us link on the website. Thank you for your time.